Numbers chapter 13, beginning at verse 17. Now, normally uh, I read from New King James, but to get the language a little clearer, I'm using NIV for this particular reference, the New International Version. Numbers 13, beginning at verse 17. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go up through the Negev and into the hill country. See what the land is like and whether the people who live there are strong or weak, few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they walled or fortified? Unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it fertile or poor? Are there trees on it or not? Do your best to bring back some of the fruit of the land. It was the season for the first ripe grapes. Now skip down to verse 25. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us. It does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. First word of verse 28. But the people who live there are powerful and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites living in the Gev. The Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites live in the hill country. Canaanites live near the sea and along the Jordan. Then Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. But the men who had gone up with them said, we can't attack those people. They are stronger than we are. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim there, the descendants of Anak that came from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, watch this, and we look the same to them. I got a quick question. How they know what they look like to them? They're scared of them, so they haven't gone up to them. They, nobody went up to us, excuse me, please. Can you describe what we look like to y'all? That didn't happen. They're afraid of them. But yet you just read it. We seem like grasshoppers to ourselves, and we know we were grasshoppers to them. I'm here to tell you that this is influence gone awry. Amen. And I want to use this particular passage to just make a few key points that if you and I are going to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, we have to use our influence, but we got to use it to promote the things that God has called us to do and to be. We can't use it in a negative fashion if we want to please God. I need you to make sure you understand that influence is good, but it's only as good as the way we use it to push people in the right direction. So look at what these people did here. Now, there are 12 spies that Moses sent over. Let me give you a context in case you're not familiar with this passage. Moses, who God blessed to lead two million people out of bondage in Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea on dry land. God supernaturally provided for them. They're now living in the wilderness. They're now living somewhere between uh, bondage in Egypt and Canaan, which represented the promised land, what God was taking them to. So they've come out of, of one thing. They're supposed to be going to something else, but they have stalled in the wilderness because they're not sure they want to go. So the people 
decided we want spies to go over and come back and tell us. You know, it's very interesting that uh, this passage suggests, the beginning of number suge of 13 suggests that Moses came up with the idea, but he did not. That God came up with the idea, rather, but he did not. Another passage in the Pentateuch tells you it was the people's idea to check out the land. God didn't want them to check out the land necessarily. He just gave them permission. That's what you find here in Numbers 13. God said, go ahead and check out the land. That wasn't his perfect will because it was the promised land. Amen. When God makes you a promise, there's no need of you checking it out to see if you can take advantage of it. What's the point of you saying, well, I know God said it's promised land, but I don't know. No, no, it's the promised land. It's not the maybe land. It's not the let's see if everything work out land. Let's, it's not the let's see how big the people are land. It's the promised land. God started making that promise way back in Abraham's day. So this is hundreds of years later. They've known for centuries that God is leading the people to a land he swore to Abraham. I'm going to give it to your descendants. And so they now have the opportunity to go into the promised land. But they say, let's check it out first. So that's what we're reading They've just sent 12 spies over who spent 40 days on this journey of checking things out. When they get back, they give a report. Now, just make sure you look again at this passage. Notice what Moses told them to do. Here were his instructions. See what the land is like. See whether the people are strong or weak. See whether they are few or many. See uh, is the land good or bad. See what kind of towns they live in. See if the Towns have, are unwalled or if they are fortified, they have walls around them. Check out the soil. Is it fertile soil or is it poor soil? Check out whether there are trees over there. And if you can, bring back some of the fruit. That's what they're instructed to do. Look at what they actually do. Verse 27, they get back and first they sound like they're going to be positive. Oh, yeah, it really does flow with milk and honey. It's amazing over there. And here's some of the fruit. You ask us to bring back some of the fruit. Here it is. Beautiful fruit. But now we use an influence in the wrong way. Now we are shifting the focus from what God promised us to what we think about it. Amen. You will never let your light shine or be the salt of the earth. Glorify God. You will never make your sphere of influence better for the people in it until you learn that what you think is vastly different from what God says, and you got to learn to focus on what God says and not even pay attention to what you think. That's our challenge. Because, you know, some of us, okay, not you, but somebody on your row is in love with what they think. What they think is all important. Have you ever met these people? What they think is everything. Well, see, the way I see it. Who told you you could see? Hey, thanks so much for viewing today. I hope you were blessed. Listen, if you want to receive all of the videos that we post, simply subscribe by pressing the button on your screen. We'd also like to encourage you to share this information with others so that they too can be blessed. God bless you, and we'll talk to you soon.